Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. How are you guys today? I wanted to make this special video and really talk about something that happened to me. It's quite personal and uh, to share it with you. So uh, if this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Fatima Omar Kamisa and I am CEO of Million Stars Academy and Spiritual Biz Moms, where we help women to turn their pain into purpose, power, and profit. So how are you today? Uh, really, really nice to meet you here. And so let me talk about, I'm actually out parked outside um, my child's school right now, and I just got this awesome sense of gratefulness, right? And it's like, I'm just gushing right now and actually getting emotional about the life that I have where I can travel, hello, hello guys, I can travel, I can be at my children's school, whether it's parent council, I actually home educated my kids for 18 years and my, my two middle ones who actually um, started um, in kindergarten, they, they actually did not go to a school. And at that time, uh, you know, I was living in uh, in a small little town here in Toronto, uh, in Aurora, uh, in Aurora, and I home educated my children, and that was the deal we made. So my two middle ones didn't actually enter school like a institutional system until high school, and <coughs> and so for them to go into that and really to understand how does social life work in there they really took the bull by the horns and you know they became president of the school they did really well alhamdulillah and went off to and now they're in university and i just got present to how grateful i am the people that i've met online and offline and so to get to the the topic of this facebook live something happened to me so i was diagnosed with a a mental health and well-being called post dramatic uh, post post traumatic stress disorder ptsd and what ptsd is something that happens when you well people like vets who go away to war and they have seen violence at an alarming rate you don't have to go away to war to actually experience ptsd so I did. I experienced, Hasina, Asalaamu Alaikum, how are you? I experienced post-traumatic stress disorder the first time. It's actually happened twice to me now. The first time when I was in a violent abusive relationship and I left. And it took me years of therapy and self-healing to actually get through that and then realize that I, ha I, I have an opportunity to build a business. And, but that didn't come until I started sharing my story. And I'm su such an advocate of people sharing their story. But the most important thing is that I get to tell my story and then when I tell my story and I become vulnerable, it gives you permission to share your story. And so I went through the same thing two years ago. Two years ago, an incident happened in my life and once again, I fell down the rabbit hole and it was like all the symptoms started coming back into my life and I couldn't stop crying my adrenals crashed again and it's it's so funny because sometimes it's like your memory whether it's a long-term memory or a short-term memory you actually lose bunch of pockets of information and you don't actually get to choose Hasina how are you my darling you don't actually get to choose which pockets of information you retain or you lose because our bodies have perfect integrity and Allah will help you in such a way where the pockets of information that are lost or say closed off are things you cannot deal with right away. So our bodies are meant to survive. So the body is going through this whole thing saying, okay, we're either going to remember this information or we're choosing life. And the body is always going to choose life. So in order for you to live and be here for your loved ones and participate in the world, it's going to block off memory. In fact, it became really bad for me. I actually started asking my children, and I still do this now, 
like they'll talk about things that have happened in the house or you know school or stuff like that in the house and I actually do not remember stuff so it's systematic and and selective amnesia where you know your name you know where you live you kind of know what you do but people and places and incidents that have happened even birthday parties or the size of, of my children's clothing or who their teachers are or when parent teacher night is I had blocked those off right or my system had blocked them off because it's not a conscious decision it's an unconscious decision that you make and so today I'm remembering more stuff and that always tells me that I'm healing that always tells me like you know what this is so great and the amount of gratefulness that I have in my life so someone sending me a message let me read this and Janet is here oh I mean thank you so much the the amount of gratefulness I have because I've started making phone calls in the last couple of days to people that I had totally like dismissed because it's like who are these people like what was I supposed to do something and going through my paperwork from a few years ago and saying okay wow I remember doing such and such a thing a couple of years ago and opening my files and folders and reading the stuff and remembering names of people that I have contact with and that I have I have connection with and these people are important to me and calling and saying you know what I'm so sorry but this is what's happened to me and I'm I'm so grateful for the generosity the love that people just open their arms and say we get it and thank you for calling and thank you for communicating because this happens trust me post-traumatic stress disorder can happen at any time from your from your past experiences and I think about the life that I have right now and the coaching and the difference I get to make for people everywhere just to say you know what even through your adversity God is never you know I'm sorry God is never going to forsake you even through your adversity he will be there for you and I'm sorry I, I did not expect me to cry and to get emotional So, uh, uh, yeah, so even through your adversity, hold on to the rope of Allah. Even through your adversity, know that there are champions. And then there will be people who will, who will make fun of you. There will be people who will say, oh, you know, you're just being a crybaby. There will be people who will say uh, health and well-being is not... It's not a significant thing or just because you went through post-traumatic stress disorder or you went through something that was violent it's not real okay there will be people like that and I've experienced that online and offline okay this is the reality the reality is that it's going to happen and what I did was I focused on the champions I focused on the supporters I focused on the people that were in my corner rather than the adversaries rather than the people that were not in my corner and guess what that is life life is going to be like that for every for every hundred people that say to you you can do it for every you know hundreds of people that say who do you think you are there's going to be one champion and one advocate and one person in your corner and focus on that one person focus on your dream focus on you and your family and make sure you create that life that you love even when you're falling down there will be people that will love you even when you are not feeling lovable to yourself those are the people that you should cling to those are the people that are going to help you to get out of that because it's a very dark place when you fall it's a very dark place when you when, when you're in that depressive state and it's real 
depression is real um, different kinds of suicidal thoughts are real PTSD is real nightmares are real and you have to find those glimmer the silver lining find those silver lining and say is that Hasina oh thank you sweetheart find the silver lining because they will shine okay and you become the silver lining for someone else like I'm doing this video right now I want to be that champion for you I want to be that supporter for you and so today I'm outside my son's school I'm about to go in and I get to be at parent teacher interviews and I get to teach my children and train them like if I don't remember something let's leave sticky notes around or let's create strategies that I can help remember what I gave my word to because in this situation with post-traumatic stress disorder it can happen at any time I mean uh, this is so important that you just shared hold on yeah exactly hold on to the rope at your lowest time because God will not forsake you and focus on the champions focus on the lovers focus on the creators focus on the positive people that are in your corner because those are the people that are gonna help you and for me it's always about me becoming vulnerable sharing my story every single time sharing my story everywhere I go I am not afraid of being vulnerable I mean you just saw me cry right now I am NOT afraid of saying I'm hurting right now and becoming a coach and creating that environment of helping another woman turn her pain into purpose is what I live for and what I'm gonna die for as long as Allah lets me I know what I'm doing is making a difference to so many people and if you need that support and you're saying to yourself you know what I want to be able to do this as well because sometimes the pain that you've experienced in the past engulfs you it chokes you it constricts you and sometimes healing only happens when you open your heart and you share and you say you know what this actually did happen to me I didn't choose it it happened and it happened so many years ago and I've been carrying this pain inside of me for so long and I want to take this now and transform it into something good something of a purpose something beautiful I gotta put on my glasses to read this did you ever cry with a client while coaching them when they hear your story yes yes I have Amina I have I you know for me as a coach I don't pretend that I am oblivious to the pain you know when I hear a woman's story and I'm in I'm in that space with her I am in that space and I'm gonna feel all that pain and then I'm gonna pull myself out and I'm going to ask her some really powerful questions so she gets to transform in her own way in her own time and and I am perfectly okay with being say what do we call unprofessional you know and saying I get it I know that pain you're a champion Hasina says Jazakallah khairan and and yes I mean may Allah protect us from the evil oppressors and so you and I we get to be our own superheroes you're like what if I told you that there's nobody coming to save us there's nobody coming okay you look around here and you think like your mom your dad your children your husband your wife th there's no one coming to save us okay Sandra yes pain is another gateway of blossoming I'm asking the question because I broke down while coaching yeah that's okay you were real you were vulnerable you were beautiful you were authentic and then at some point in that time you've got to switch and you've got to not make it about your pain and you've got to make it about the client and how do you ask her powerful questions that's what we teach you at million stars Academy it's perfectly okay to be unprofessional unprofessional means to cry with your client 
right? To say, I feel your pain because I've been there. And then it's about you giving your hand to say, let me help you get out of that dark place. And if you need more time, take more time. Take as much time as you need because this is about you. This is about you saying, I am ready to shift. I am ready to say, you know what? This pain I have inside of me. And the other thing that for me, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay for me to cry because a lot of times, you know, my clients, especially in the Million Stars Academy, they're like, how do we give ourselves permission to be coaches when our lives are not perfect? Well, guess what? This year I went through, actually not even this year, the last two years I've gone through so much therapy and healing and coaching because, because of the incident that happened to me and my post-traumatic syndrome was huge. And so had I decided that I needed to be perfect in order to coach, I would not be coaching. I would not be this amazing woman I am today. And I don't say that lightly. I don't say that lightly. And I don't say that from a place of ego. I say that from a place of humbleness. I say that from a place of saying, you got to have the courage to stand for another woman and you only need to be two lessons ahead of her. You get that? You don't need to have read and do your masters and do your thesis and think your life is going to be so perfect in order to coach another woman. If you are two lessons or three lessons or four lessons in front as a teacher, you can help that woman, right? Look at tutoring in school. You have children who are in grade one who are being tutored by students who are in grade four and five because they've had enough of the skills, the knowledge, and the know-how to help someone in grade one. The student doesn't have to have finished their master's to teach someone in grade one. That's all you're doing here, right? So if you're going through this, I'm a fraud, who am I? Can I do this? Am I capable of doing this? Yes, you are because you've walked the path. You've walked the path and here you are and you get to give. A candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. So even if you're going through your own stuff right now, what I do about that is I hire someone else. I hire a therapist, I hire a coach, and I move on to the next phase. When I meet someone who is just becoming a client, I can help them because they might be at phase one and I might be at phase four. That's the only difference. And I, I don't look at my clients or you as someone who needs to be fixed. You do not need to be fixed. You are perfect, whole, and perfect. And all I get to do as a coach is help you to find the gaps and fill the gaps so, so that you can have more joy and you can have a paradigm shift and you can look at situations in your life from a different way. So I really, um, I acknowledge you for, for watching this video and yes, I did cry in this video and if you haven't seen it, you can watch it on the replay. Share the video um, if you found this to be beneficial and helpful to you or the people on, um, on your lists or in, you know, all your friends. And if you have any questions, I'm here. Send me a question if you've decided somewhere along the line that you'd like to write a book or become a coach. Let me know how I can support you. And you know, maybe we can have a, a simple conversation to see if we make a good fit, right? Because it's always about, you know, does it work for you? Does it work for me? And is it something you made me cry? <laughs> did I did I make you cry? I'm so sorry, Asina. <laughs> I apologize for that and yes I did get emotional on this video and I was very vulnerable talking about my own post-traumatic stress disorder that I've gone through in the last 18 months and the healing that I am doing right now uh, so the clue is that since I'm remembering more and more information it tells me that I'm healing so the last 18 months have been extremely traumatic for me and and that's okay it doesn't mean 
that I'm broken. It doesn't mean that I cannot serve. It doesn't mean that I cannot con contribute. And so in those pockets of time where I am not okay, then I'm not okay. I take the time to just stop and to relax and to, you know, get coaching or therapy. And in the times that I'm okay, wah, you know what? It's like, let's do this. Let's have fun. Let's go make a difference and let's show the world our brilliance. This is the best time to be a woman in history. That's my opinion anyway, and I'm sticking to it. The best time to be a woman, to make a difference. And if you're considering writing a book, we're creating our book retreat really, really soon, watch out for this space where you can just come in, imagine that, like come in on the Friday night, do some networking with some fantastic professionals who are rocking it, and then Saturday and Sunday, bring your laptops and we're in a hotel, we're gonna get your books done, and by the time Sunday night comes and you're done, Hasina, oh, I mean, I mean, thank you Hasina for such a beautiful prayer and dua. So in the book retreat, by the time Sunday comes, you will have a tangible book, you'll know your outline, and then we'll have a 12-week course after that, and a, like a mindset call every single week to get you going. And I promise you, it is the most powerful experience, and you will be a published author next year. Imagine that. Oh my God, I'm so excited about that. We're creating all the stuff in, you know, in the, let's say behind the scenes is all happening right now. And look out for this space because I am committed, okay? Like fiercely committed to for your success and your joy and your abundance. And I love you guys. Thank you for watching this and share the video. Take care.